good morning students it's my pleasure to be with you to discuss something about the concepts ideas principles and basic understandings related to the unit 9 research methodology in fact research is a very big area and it covers quite a lot of topics if you see the syllabus it has got 10 topics we are starting with what is research what is the purpose of research what are the various types of research various research methods then we we'll move on to research design okay we we'll move on to research design what is a research design how to select the research problem how to go about with the review of literature how to formulate the research problem how to formulate and test the hypothesis what are the various sampling techniques available how to collect data using questionnaires interviews observation and library records and how to analyze and interpret the data whatever you collected what are the various statistical packages that are available for the purpose of analyzing the data you collected now how the report is to be written what is style you need to follow in structuring your research output what about the availability of citation tools anti plagiarism tools and uh, a special branch of library research called metric studies bibliometric sinometric all such kind of things and the calculation of impact factor for journals calculation of the research impact of institutions authors h index g index and i ten index and finally we have a thought on the current trends in library and information research so this is a whole panorama of unit 9 research methodology let us see these 10 uh, components one by one we we'll started the first one the fundamental concepts related to research so normally when people say research it's nothing but research searching again and again but this searching again and again should be meaningful and should be systematic it's not just like that we go and search for something it is a well planned well designed well executed such procedures scientifically decided list of procedures that you need to carry out one by one in order to in order to two reasons in order to two either to discover something very new so you are going to try to do in your research you are going to find out something which is not at all available in this particular world till date it's very new or or either you can take the existing knowledge this knowledge can be verified in the present scenario you can check whether that law that principle still applicable now or in your research you are trying to bring some kind of modifications in the already existing knowledge so we are trying to bring something new in the already existing knowledge or the old theory old principle old idea is going to be applied in a new environment so new application of old knowledge so all these things are placed under the umbrella term called research people in general they say research means search for knowledge so we search for some knowledge and people say it is a systematic inquiry so we are conducting a systematic inquiry on a particular chosen phenomenon we take any one particular topic and we try to describe it we try to explain it we try to predict and control it fine and he says the research involves both inductive and deductive methods that's what uh, american sociologist uh, says see research involves both inductive and deductive methods it's very clear see what are these inductive methods and deductive methods so how you are going to infer how you are going to draw conclusion for particular study whether you are going to follow inductive method or deductive method in inductive method 
we are moving from individuals and we are reaching the general population for example you say that ramasami is good a person is a good person kandasami is a good person balamurun is a good person all these good persons are the librarians so librarians are good persons so you are moving from individual observations and you come to a conclusion which can be applied to the entire population that is what we call inductive method then comes deductive method we say that all the librarians are good ramasam is librarian so he is also good so from the general observation we are applying it to the individuals that is deductive methods so he says research involves both inductive methods and deductive methods and research is a scientific quest for certain information of a specific topic you choose a very specific topic you look for very specific piece of information in a scientific way but if you come to a social science field you can very well say that research always consists of defining a problem you should define what is the problem you are going to discuss you have to collect the data formulate the hypothesis you have to analyze it and you have to reach some conclusions fine so in research you are always moving from known to unknown so we know certain things with this ideas in our mind we are trying to find out which is not known to us fine then what are the purposes of research see basically any research aims to discover answers to questions so before conducting any research we have a list of research questions we have objectives well defined objectives to get answers to those questions to get answers to check those objectives we conduct the research fine so the main aim is to find out the truth what was hidden and which is not discovered yet so what was not discovered yet you are trying to discover it that is the main purpose of the common purpose of any research but in broader sense the objectives and the purpose of research can be categorized into four major groups the first one the researcher wants to know something more and more about a phenomenon about a particular concept about a particular situation so he wants to get more information more insights new insights and into a particular issue the particular concept so those kinds of studies are called exploratory or formulative research studies to so one thing so we are trying to know something more and more about uh, something which we know very less and less and secondly in research we are trying to we are going to depict we are going to show the characteristics of a particular individual or a situation or a group we take this individual you take high how, how uh, the 12th completed students are reacting to online classes you just describing it are you take situation computerization of libraries are you take group of people so you just describing them okay there is another purpose of research the studies which are conducted with such a kind of purpose they are termed as descriptive research studies then comes another category of studies called diagnostic studies research studies wherein as a purpose we are trying to find out why a particular situation particular concept particular problem occurs where does it occur how frequently it occurs and what are the various variables what are the various other related points the things which are closely associated with such an occurrence so those studies are called diagnostic research studies and finally in many experimental studies we set a hypothesis we collect data and we are trying to either accept or reject a hypothesis so those studies are called as hypothesis testing research studies so one minute please yes i'm sorry uh, because there was a low battery i need to recharge my uh, cell phone so these are the four major purposes 
for the fulfill, fulfillment of which we conduct a lot of research work. Good. Then comes scope of the research. See, whenever you talk any particular topic in any particular discipline, normally research will be very, very broad. For example, you want to study about library automation, digital libraries, information literacy skills, digital literacy skills, bibliometric aspect of particular research, so whatever it may be, the area normally is very, very wide. You may not be able to conduct research on those wide areas. So what you are supposed to do is that you have to create a border area of operation for your research. See, I am going to do my research within these four boundaries. This is my area. I will not go away from this area. So that is what we call a scope of your research study. You are trying to restrict your research. You are trying to make your research more specific, more narrow here. See, for example, you want to study about uh, Indian economy. Okay. So what you can do is that Indian economy during British period. So you are trying to narrow down your research area. Indian economy during British period. Or Indian economy with special respect to agricultural economy. So we are trying to focus only on agricultural economy. So something like that. You can define. Maybe you can use a location or a place or a time or some concepts to refine and narrow down your research area. For example, there's a topic which goes like this. Functioning of libraries in the Kendri Vidyalayas of Chennai and Ernakulam region with a special reference to their modernization. You see how narrow the topic is? So we are talking about uh, functioning of libraries. What kind of libraries? We are talking about Kendri Vidyalaya libraries. Okay. And where are they located? The library is located in Chennai region and Ernakulam region. Only these two regions are covered. And that too, we are not discussing in general about the functioning of these libraries. We are bothered more about the modernization aspects of these libraries. So all these things will work as a boundary for your research, what we call as scope of the research work. Fine. So any, any kind of thing, either geographical or uh, temporal, time-based or conceptual limits you can bring in so that your research will become more focused and more narrower in terms of its coverage. Fine. Then ethics of research. So whenever you do any kind of research, whether you are preparing a journal article, you're writing a book, whatever it may be, you have to see that you are following certain code of context. You are following certain guidelines. You are not violating the commonly framed principles. So they're called research ethics. So what are the ethics you need to follow while you are carrying out your research activities? For example, I would like to brief you on the prominently talked about research ethics. For example, honesty. When you are reporting the data, when you are reporting the results, when you're talking about the methods and procedures you followed your research work, you have to honestly report it. You're not supposed to fabricate it. You are not supposed to falsify it. You're not supposed to misinterpret data. See, after getting the data, you are not supposed to change the data as you like, the way you like, the way it will satisfy your hypothesis, the way it will satisfy your institution. You're not supposed to do that. So honesty is a must. Then comes objectivity. So your, your, your research design and its contact, all those things should not be subjective. It should be objective. There should not be any bias, either in the choosing of the experimental designs or in the data analysis, data interpretation, or in your personal decisions, whether I need this particular person or this particular person to help me or in when you're writing your grants applications, when you are choosing the ex experts, if any other kind of aspects of research, please understand you are not subjecting yourself. You are, be, you are going to be objective. So I'm not going to worry about it. I just want for the purpose of research. Then comes integrity is very simple. Always you should keep your promises. So sometimes you promise that when you're going to collect data from the respondents, you promise that I will not uh, disclose this data for any other things. I will not use this data for any other purposes. 
So you should keep up your promises and you should act with sincerity and you have to strive for consistency of your thought and action. So whatever you think, whatever you plan as an action should be consistent. So you should have integrity in your research activities. Carefulness. You should be very careful in conducting each and every phase of research work. Negligence should be neglected. And you should be very careful. And you should critically examine what you have done in your research work. And you should keep a yeah, very well-maintained record of all your research activities. Be very careful. Then openness. Either when you are doing the research, when somebody are giving their own comments, opinions, new methods, new procedures, you should be open to receive them. In the same way, whatever tool, technologies, resources you are using for your research, you should be free to share all these things with other people. That's what you call as openness. Respect for intellectual property. See, when you're doing your research work, maybe for the purpose of writing few lines in the introduction or in the review of literary section or in the discussion section, you always need to cite others. Maybe the copyrighted information or patents or other forms of intellectual property. You should honor them. So whenever you are borrowing the ideas of others and you are incorporating all those ideas in your research paper, those people are to be given due credit properly. They are to be cited. Fine. And whenever you're using some data which is not at all published till date, Please see that you get proper permission from the people concerned and then you cite and make use of those information in your research work. And please never ever plagiarize. What is the plagiarism? It is a process of copying the content from others without acknowledging. So never do that. Then confidentiality. So whenever you're doing some research work, you collect some data, personal data from the people, maybe trade secrets, our military secrets, our patient information, the hospitals. So such kind of details should not be revealed to anybody else. You should keep it very confidential. Then very, very important, responsible publication. See, please never ever publish a paper just for the purpose of publishing a paper, just for the purpose of increasing your research count. You should do your research and publish it for the purpose of advancing research in that particular field. Your research should be there to at least bring one person improvement in the already existing knowledge. This is not just for getting six to 7,000 promotion or 7,000, 8,000 scale of promotion. Please understand that. And never go for wasteful and duplicative publications. There are some people, they publish same paper in two different places just by changing the title. So that kind of practices are against the research ethics. Then social responsibility. Whenever you do research, you always keep social good in your mind. So your research and its output should be providing some kind of help to society to remove or reduce the problems faced by society. So that kind of research should be yours. Then there should not be any discrimination. Maybe whenever you're dealing with your peers or students, so never have any prejudice against gender race, ethnicity, or other factors, no discrimination. Then competence, very, very important. A researcher should always try to learn new things. If a researcher is doing a research for four or five years, then he has to see that he has to keep on learning new things every day, new methods, new tools, new techniques. He should improve himself. His competency after the completion of the research work should be much, much better than what he had in the beginning of his research career, competence. Then like legality. Then when you're doing research, you should always obey to the rules, the regulations, laws which are enacted by the government, the policies which are prescribed by the individual institutions or governments. You should obey the policies. Then animal care and human subjects. If you are going to make use of animals as a part of your research work. If you are subjecting those animals for experimentation, please understand you give proper respect to the animals and you are not uh, conducting any poorly designed experiments that may harm, that may disturb the animals. That you should take care. Then whenever you are going to 
analyze experiment with the human beings please see that you are not damaging their dignity their privacy their autonomy always see that you are minimizing the harms and risk and you are maximizing the benefits whenever you are going to have human beings as a subjects of your research so these are a few qualities that a researcher should always keep in his mind fine okay then types of research by its use we have basic research applied research action research and evaluative research fine let us see them one by one what is this basic or fundamental or pure research see these kind of researchers they are mainly concerned with generalization so they want to generalize something some fact that can be applied to the entire universe or entire set of people in a particular community they want to generalize something they want to get some basic understanding of a concept so there is a concept called god particle nobody knows anything about that so we are trying to understand what is actually and sometimes this kind of research is bothered about the formulation of a theory something like theories of reference service theory of classification theory of catalog we are trying to create a new theory and this particular research is done for the sake of knowledge okay we just want to improve a particular discipline with it with a rich content of new knowledge we want to accumulate knowledge on a particular discipline that is why we conduct uh, this kind of pure research and we are always trying to find out in this uh, pure research we like to have a broad base of application we want to find out something that may have a broad base of application that means with that findings you can do anything you may do lot of things it it cannot be it will not be restricted to a particular piece of action and whenever you want to understand the characteristics of given idea or objects you can go pure research and the pure research we are searching for broad principles okay and only with the help of pure research we are developing the theories laws principles and formula and research this kind of research helps to generate new knowledge there's a major purpose of pure research for example discovery of electricity by x or y is a basic research because the person who invented electricity he did not say that uh, electricity should be used only for operating cinema theaters no there's very broad application you can use electricity for any purpose file as a library science can be applied uh, to any aspect of library science prolegomenal library classification theories of reference service principles of book selection given by melville dewey they are all uh, broad principles born out of pure research activities got then comes applied research so whenever you say there is a problem in your home or in your library or in the society there is a demand for getting some solution for the problem and if you do research to get a solution for the problem then it is called as applied research so your aim is very very specific you got an objective of giving a solution to a problem for example you feel that your library when people come and take books return books it takes lot of time so what do you do you do a research you take three or four different methods of issuing and borrowing books and you find out which is the best method there's an applied research fine whatever rules you had in basic research all those principles are applied in applied research for example can of recall value of dr s r ranganathan that belongs to applied research broadford's law of scattering is he brought forward he brought out this law to find out what are the core journals in a particular discipline it is a applied research chain procedure when people are not able to derive subject headings ranganathan has given a new mechanism a new tool what is a problem the problem of preparing subject index entries so he has given a solution edison's works and bob zero applied research activities then comes action research which is also known as problem solving research or practitioner based research see this also a kind of applied research and here also we are trying to find a solution for a problem but what is the difference between applied research and action research 
in the action research even the affected population also get participation in the research work for example you go to a college you get some 30 or 40 first year students you test the information literacy you find out the problems you keep on going and teaching them for some time then you conduct some test to find out whether they have improved their information literacy skills you end it so throughout the research work you are traveling with the participants the affected population so that kind of applied research is called as action research then comes evaluative research it is a research where we are trying to measure how effective the library services are your ethnographic service current awareness service selective dissemination information service or online services how effective they are how effective the library programs are how effectively library is functioning how effective is library collection is so you are trying to measure the effectiveness of different dimensions of library that's what is called as evaluative research you are trying to know whether the policies programs and services particular library were successful or not see library is having some aims and objectives whether the library has fulfilled its objectives or not sometimes we talk and measure the evaluation in terms of cost so there is something called a cost benefit analysis see management may ask a question so we are investing 4 lakhs rupees every year on the resources what is the outcome how many students have published papers in scope of scopus and web science so cost benefit analysis see there is a gentleman called powell who classified evaluation research into three categories summative research formative research and performance measurement research see formative research means see when a particular program is going on in particular new system is being used by a organization when it is being implemented during the process of implementation it is tested that is called formative evaluation but once the project is over once the function is over when the services are over then you go and evaluate that is called as summative evaluation for example we have evaluation of library management software evaluation of library opacs and such kind of things then comes interdisciplinary research so these days we are getting lot of momentum for this see when we are doing research in library science we bring the tools and techniques available in some other topics some other subjects and we do a interdisciplinary between two subjects for example we have web 2.0 in libraries so library is one concept web 2.0 is something different concept but we are linking these two concepts see psychology of college library users see college library users are there then we talk about psychology we link these two it becomes interdisciplinary study fine good then comes multidisciplinary here whenever you are trying to find a solution for a particular problem whenever you are trying to explain a particular concept you get the help from many people many people in sense those who belong to many disciplines those who belong to many subjects so you are taking the help of numerous many specialized branches of learning and you get tips techniques knowledge of several disciplines several methods and all these things are collaborated corroborated coordinated so that together by drawing the knowledge of all these subjects by integrating the knowledge taken from all the subjects you are trying to have a single aim of finding a solution for the problem that is called the multidisciplinary research see see interdisciplinary working within a single discipline you are doing a research in library science that is interdisciplinary cross discipline you are analyzing a particular subject from the point of view of another subject that is called cross disciplinary then comes multidisciplinary as i told you we get ideas from many subjects and we are trying to find a solution multidisciplinary then comes interdisciplinary here we are integrating the tips tools and methods taken from two or three uh, disciplines we are making them we are synthesizing them and we are trying to get the answers interdisciplinary fine good okay 
So, so far we discuss about 9.1. So, let me move on to 9.2, which talks about a different research methods. So, based on the purpose, the research can be classified into three different categories, exploratory, descriptive, and explanatory. In exploratory research, you are always conducting this kind of research to explore new concepts. So there's a new concept called COVID-19. Okay, um, a new variety of a disease, a new concept which libraries and something like artificial intelligence. So you are trying to explore this new concept. You are trying to know more and more about a lesser known topic. For example, there is always an argument whether the information available in Facebook, Twitter, so these kinds of social media information resources, whether they can be used at par with the print resources. You want to know something more about this information, you can contact. So the exploratory research is always talking about very creative problems and innovative research problems faced by the researcher. Then comes the descriptive research. It's a very popular uh, social science research method in which the researcher just wants to describe what is available, the, what is the state of affairs, what is the status quo of a particular unit, particular person, particular institution, or a particular situation, particular environment. We just describe how it exists at present. We are just reporting what is happening at present. It is also called as ex post facto research. And in fact, if you take social science, it is one of the principal methods of conducting research. We are not going to have any kind of experiments here. Typically, we collect data, we analyze data, we interpret data. For example, all survey studies, case studies, field studies, fact-finding studies, comparative studies, content analysis, they're all descriptive research studies. For example, Analysis of current status of institutional repast in India. As on today, what is the status of institutional repositories in India? This is a descriptive research. Then comes explanatory research or casual research. Here, we are trying to find out the reason or the cause why a particular event happens that way. Why the students behave in a particular way. Or what is the attitude of librarians towards ICT? Why is it so? Why there is a school of thought which says that information literacy should be initiated when the children are doing their primary classes. So we see how a particular event, behavior, attitude, or school of thought happens and why it happens so. What are the reasons for that? So we are trying to give reasons for why a particular thing happens why a particular behavior takes place so that you can give explanations for why and how questions, why this particular thing happens so, how this particular thing happens so. You are giving answers to these kinds of questions in the explanatory research. For example, these days, especially in engineering college and medical colleges, the libraries, they started inclining more towards the introduction of CCTV cameras, RFID tools, security gates, all those things. So why? We are trying to find out why this happens. What is the need for this kind of tendency to develop among the librarians? So this is explanatory research. Then based on the time you are taken for data collection, we have cross-sectional research and we have longitudinal research. In the case of cross-sectional research, you go to users, you collect data from them only once till the completion of your research. You collect data from the subjects only once. That is cross-sectional research. For example, status of computerization of college libraries in Mumbai city. I just go once, I collect data, come back. That's all. On the other side, we have longitudinal research where you collect data from the samples more than once. At least twice you go and collect data from them. And this longitudinal research can be categorized into three categories. One is time series research. For example, you go to a public library, you find out 
a set of people those who joined the library in 2008 another set of people those who joined the library in 2010 another set of people who joined the library in 2012 okay three different groups and you are collecting data from them on how efficiently library is satisfying their information needs this is time series data then panel study the panel study you collect data from same samples at different times for example you take students you go and uh, see how skilled they are in using internet when they are the first year of the ba english then again you go to second year when the same students when they come to ba second year you go and conduct same test then when they come to third year ba english again you go on to find out how their internet skill is to so this kind of study is called panel study then comes cohort study here we find out a set of respondents those who are sharing a common feature for example we see around 60 librarians joined tamil nadu state service in 2014 so you take all 60 people but you are not collecting data from all the 60 people at the same time for from 10 people you collect data now after 6 months you collect data from another 10 people after one year you go and collect data from another 10 students this is how the behavior attitude opinion differs those kinds of studies are called cohort studies but all these are longitudinal research then research by type of data based on the type of data you collect based on type of type of data you analyze the research can be categorized as quantitative research where you collect only quantitative data data in numbers you analyze for example how many students have visited your library how many books were borrowed by the students the last month something like that on the other hand you can have qualitative research where you collect and analyze qualitative data what is the qualitative data where you use words like good better best excellent very good good poor satisfactory or strongly agree uh, strongly disagree Some, these kind of words are used for data collection purpose they belong to qualitative study good then comes delphi method So this is a method which was originally initiated in America long back in 1950s by a couple of people from Rand Corporation. Okay, so basically it is a method of forecasting, a tool used by America to forecast its growth. You know how this particular system works means, for example, so you have a topic. Okay, you have a topic. What is the topic? The problems faced by the younger generation in accessing the library. This is a topic, for example. so you prepare a questionnaire and to get answers you select experts okay you have a panel of experts maybe 5 maybe 6 maybe 10 you have some 10 experts carefully scrutinized and selected 10 experts okay and what you do you hand over the questionnaire to all the 10 experts so they all will go through they all will give the answer and return the questionnaires after receiving the questionnaires from them you consolidate whatever opinions are given by each and every respondent and the opinions given by all the 10 respondents are given to all the 10 respondents once again so all the experts will get the will get the answers and they will see see i have given my command for this particular question this way but the same question gets different command from different examiners different experts whether what i am arguing is correct or what they are telling is correct if they are right then why shouldn't i change my mind in that case the second round i will change my answer to same question after reading the answers given by other panelists so this way at the end of every round people will keep on changing their minds whenever required and there will be a facilitator he will be conducting three or four or five or six rounds of questionnaire collection till he feels that uh, the experts have come to a common conclusion it's a consensus is reached till then this process will keep on going on so this kind of method is called as delphi method okay fine this called a uh, kind of a forecasting tool which was developed and used in usa to predict its future and uh, here we collect data from the experts not from the individual respondents we have a uh, technically sound expertise people we collect data from them normally o helmer is associated with the development of delphi studies and uh, 
the purpose of the delphi study is to get a kind of refinement on judgmental data so we want each and every expert to give their judgments and all the judgments are refined at the end of second round third round fourth round we get a very very pakka answer okay so you obtain the judgments of experts you share their judgments and these are used for predicting what is going to happen in a particular environment what is going to happen in a particular institution so based on that you will be able to have a successful planning successful organization successful decision making process in your institution so this is a delphi technique got then comes methods of research we have survey method historical method comparative method experimental method and case study method let us see them one by one the experimental research is a research where we are trying to find out the impact of one or two or three variables on a particular phenomenon so we want to just re read how gender influences reading habits by controlling all other factors so by controlling all other factors maybe maybe the availability of books the ability to read english or the parental support many many factors may be there but by controlling all other factors we are trying to find out what is the impact of gender on the reading habits so that is an experimental research so we are trying to find out what are the variables how they are related and whether there is any relation between two different kinds of variables whether dependent variable and independent variable they are related they are not related whether independent variable is having any impact on dependent variable or it's not having any impact such kinds of things are studied in experimental research and experimental research it is always oriented towards future we do experiment we get a solution the solution will be applied in future fine in experimental research there is a process called randomization so whenever you want to select some students for the research work you should follow a kind of randomization randomly you should select the respondents for example 50 students are there you want to divide them into two groups one group is called as controlled group the other group is called experimental group how to select students for controlled group and experimental group that should be purely based on random selection fine what are these two groups in experimental studies see controlled group is a group on which we are not going to conduct any kind of research nothing will be done they will simply coming and going all our experiments will be conducted on the students who are the part and parcel of experimental group okay for example we want to find out the effect of kabasura kudinir in herbal water on minimizing the the possibility of getting corona okay so we need to get two different group of people okay so we get one group of children on uh, for whom we are not going to give any kind of kabasura kudi no herbal water for them for the other group we give herbal water kabasura kudi need and we are checking whether it is helping them to compact covid 19 or not fine good in experimental research we talk about two things one is external validity and the other is internal validity what is external validity so to what extent the findings of your experimental research can be generalized can be applied to all environments all the places the entire population internal validity we worry about the reliability of research to what extent the findings of your research are reliable that is internal validity so for example there is a question there is a research on the relationship between user education and users efficiency of searching databases this title has got two variables one is user education and then the search efficiency here user education is an independent variable and search efficiency is the dependent variable we are to we are trying to find out to what text run user education has created some kind of effect on the search efficiency of the users fine for example a very very, very popular uh, information retrieval system experiment which was conducted by c w cleverden in the university called cranfield national university where he experimented on the performance of five different indexing systems 
okay so the experimental research can be conducted either with a single group or with two groups as i told you know you take same group you without giving any tablets you measure their temperature their uh, blood pressure then for one month you give some tablets after then same people who tested again whether the tablet has improved their health or not so this kind of experiment is called single group experimental research in two groups as i told you we have one group called controlled group we have another group called testing group okay experimental group then survey method is a very very popular method where we are trying to find out the facts and it is a method where we go to the people directly we go to people directly we collect data from them in a particular point of time we go and collect data directly from the people so that kind of research is called a survey method maybe the data required for this kind of research can be collected by observations or interviews or schedules whatever it may be and this method is very suitable especially when your population is scattered geographically some respondents are in telangana some are in andhra pradesh some are in karnataka some are in north kannada some are in tamil nadu so your population and your sample is scattered widely you can use this survey method it is always oriented towards present because we are trying to collect data now and find out what is it the best example is infos information requirement of social sciences a study conducted in uk is an example of survey method then comes historical method a method where we are going to analyze all the past records we are going to explore all the possible other information resources so that we will be able to understand how a particular institution particular system particular process have originated how it has been developing over a period of time so this normally historical research will be descriptive research wherein you go on to describe the things it is past oriented we always uh, think about what happened in the past and uh, mostly documents are treated as primary resources and please understand historical method can be used in any subjects it can be used as a method of conducting research not only in history in all the subjects okay for example we have coins archives manuscripts personal letters written by mahatma gandhi ji something like that or the judgments given by court verdicts or autobiographies written by the authors the famous personalities the paintings pictures about them the oral descriptions so some people may be describing how a particular place was 20 30 years before if you take a king the the grand grand grandson of king will come and tell about the kings so that kind of things the diaries these are all major sources for conducting the historical studies though you can use uh, many different methods of collecting data sometimes you may not be able to go to past and observe what happened fine so the historical method we talk about two things internal and external criticism see you want to conduct a historical research you go and collect lot of resources to support your research so we are examining whether the documents what you collected as sources for your research whether they are fulfilling the external evaluation criteria and the internal evaluation criteria what is external evaluation when you have some resources to support your research you have to check its physical verification you should see, you should verify it physically whether the color of the paper printing script language ink and paper binding whatever you see in the resource in the source whether they belong to the period which is being studied by you for example you are studying about a mohal history okay and if you if somebody says sir i got a book which was written during mohal period if you take and check that book the book is having all kinds of letters to print out latest the kind of letters alphabets we are using in the present century So you can understand that this is not a original book, it's a fake book. So physical verification. Then comes internal evaluation. Whenever you get a resource to support your historical research, you should see the originality of that particular resource. You should understand to what extent you can rely upon the contents of that particular resource. 
how to check it based on authority who published this particular book how the author is related to the person who is described in the book what is the consistency of the events happened and the year in which the book was written so internally you are checking the content of documents fine for example historical studies in library science we talk about history of classification schemes history of public libraries in india and more on then comes comparative method of research where we are trying to compare two different things two similar situations okay we are trying to find out whether is there any relation they are almost same or not if they are same how they are same if they are different why they are different see this comparative method of research can be either cross cultural so you have to find to find out the internet use habits of the plain area people the internet use habits of hill area people you see different cultures cross national situations how indians are searching for information in google how americans are searching for information in google so cross national situations you can compare the events you can compare the library techniques so what is the technique being used by library a and library b what are the tools what are the practices what are the procedures what are the amenities available in library a library b you can compare you can compare two classification schemes you can compare two or more engineering college libraries you can compare two or more digital library softwares all those things in the comparison you are trying to find out what is the strength of product a and product b situation a situation b what about the weakness of both what are the efficiency of a and b what are the characteristics of a and b you can find out the libraries library services library database library collection library practice you can find out. fine the purpose of doing comparative study is that we are going to find out which is the best system which is the best service which is the best program which is the best library so to find out that we are doing comparative method of research then comes case studies so case study is a study wherein we are studying a particular unit in depth so very in depth study a very comprehensive study is called as a case study so here we are going to study a, a thorough analysis of either a particular individual or a particular social group like uh, people who belong to particular village particular community particular caste or a process we are going to 100% 100% 360 degree angle of particular process a situation library automation program you are studying about a particular community a particular institution so all these things are called as case study methods so what is the purpose so we are trying to find out the entire life cycle of the particular units if you are studying about an institution you are going to see how this institution was originated when was it originated who originated it what and all activities it did how it is now so what are the reasons why it has reached the present status what is the plus point what is the minus point so you have a thorough analysis of chosen units that is what it is called as case study method so this method was introduced by a gentleman called f leeple for example if you want to study the behavior of the child the best method what you can do is case study method good so as far as libraries are concerned you can have a specific library for your case study purpose or a specific section of library a specific service of the library specific program of the library or a specific library software so all those things can be studied under case study method see we have many different types of case studies we have historical case study observational oral history situational clinical multi stage exploratory descriptive and explanatory case studies okay and what kind of tools and techniques can be used for conducting case studies you can make use of documents meeting records calendars archives interviews observations so all these tools and techniques can be used for conducting case studies okay fine so final slide so what is solo research a research done by individual person but these days what is popular 
what is most demanded team oriented research object oriented research interdisciplinary research these things are gaining momentum these days so people always want to work in teams and they want to get experts from many different fields subjects and they conduct a kind of interdisciplinary research work then empirical research a research that gives the same results wherever you conduct that kind of research is called as empirical research and when you have these four items what is the correct order axiom hypothesis law and theory we have axiom first the old proverbs so they are proposed as hypothesis the hypothesis are tested and they become law in the course of time laws become theories fine and there is a gentleman called wc sculpture who identified 15 steps so if you want to have a credible research a reliable research you should follow the 15 steps given by wc sculpture fine right? so that's end of uh, 9.3 so far we discuss about what is research what is the purpose of research and what are the research ethics and what are different types of research in 9 1 and 9 2 so thank you so much in next session we will continue with 9.3 till then take care thank you so much